Hey guys, John Vaporonic Technologies here. Today I wanted to show you the difference. Uh, we have two different sample parts here. We have an aluminum piece and we have a stainless steel piece in my right hand. You can really see the differences between wet blast and dry blast using the same grits and the same pressures. And what I love is just the visual difference, but we're gonna get into the technical part here in a separate video. We're gonna show you uh, roughness differences using the profilometer but I left a section here in the middle. This is raw aluminum here. This is what the substrate looked like before. And then over here, this is dry blast. We used 220 grit aluminum oxide at 90 PSI, three inches from the part. We shot at a 90 degree angle straight into the part. And we did also the same over here. We used 220 grit aluminum oxide in the wet cabinet, 90 PSI, shot straight at the part at 90 degrees. So you can really see the differences between the parts. Um, I can feel that there is a roughness difference. Um, that is a certain given here just by feel. Um, this is a much more refined, smooth surface. So what that's telling me right off the bat, which we know this in previous videos, if I want to get as rough as dry, I have to drop the abrasive, basically the size. I have to go down in size, meaning well, I have to go up in size, meaning I need a bigger particulate. Um, so I would go down in number and the size gets bigger. So for example, if this is a 120 dry blast and my surface roughness comes out to be a, let's say a two RA or a three or a four, and I want to replicate the same roughness in a wet system, I'm gonna have to go to a bigger size. So I might have to drop to a 70 grit aluminum oxide versus a 120 in the wet cabinet. You can just see though, there's a couple other things that I wanna point out when we look at these samples. Again, here's the stainless sample. You can see the consistency of the blast pattern wet to dry. You can see some streaking in the dry system because of that pencil, that fine point that you have in a dry system. Um, you, it's, it's harder to see in the stainless part here, uh, but it's certainly in the wet system, you can see how consistent the finishes are on the pieces. And again, we're not trying to polish the part here, we're trying to show you aluminum oxide, which would be used normally for coating prep, coating removal, um, or some type of bonding application. But I wanted to show you what these parts look like. We're gonna do a separate video showing you the roughness differences, so if you guys wanna check that out, please do that. We'll also have data that you can download, we'll have a sheet. Um, from the profilometer that gives you all of the readings. There's many different values, R, A, R, Z, uh, good grief, there's about 15 or 20, I think, um, that you as an engineer can use. But also, like I say, these are visual cues and differences as well. We get a lot of applications, a lot of times people want to know just what does it actually look like. Um, as an engineer drawing something, you might need to do a post process wet or dry and you have no idea what that part's going to look like and turn out so uh, we can give you visuals if you guys have samples that you would like to send in and have testing done we can help with that uh, we could do trial parts processing for you that is free of charge we do not charge you for that there's a lot of time that we put in this and a lot of effort that the sales team does to help you get the best process in the world that can make you a successful company or small business so if you guys have questions on this particular process again we're showing you wet blast versus dry blast using 220 grit aluminum oxide and that is brown aluminum oxide not the white um, that is what this video is all about so we will show you what the roughness profile looks like so stay tuned thanks for watching